I got two of these Star TSP 652 printers. Neither of them work. These are both mine, and they are from my business. This one here I bought about six years ago, and it broke after about a year, and then I just put it into storage and forgot about it. This is the replacement one that I bought five years ago. Now these things are used in a bar, so as you can probably imagine, they get quite a bit of abuse. They get beer spilt on them and stuff. I mean, five years ago, I wouldn't have known how to fix this. Some would argue I still don't know how to fix things, but I think I've got a better chance of fixing it now than I did five years ago. And basically, I've got to fix one of them, because if these aren't connected to the till system that we use, then we can't open the till drawer. <laughs> So if someone pays cash, the till drawer doesn't open, which is mildly inconvenient. As far as I know, they've got different faults. So this is the original one. So let's plug this one in and I'll show you the fault that this one has. They both power on. Okay, so that's the first one plugged in. This is the original one from six years ago. We switch it on. We get the green light, flashing red light, and then rapid blinking flashing red light. And according to the troubleshooting guide on the STARS website, that means cutter error. I've tried resetting this, I tried numerous things five years ago, I even swore at it, uh, but it didn't make any difference. So that's still got the same error that it had five years ago, which is nice. And then this one comes on, and it doesn't actually make, it makes a, a couple of noises, whereas this one doesn't. This isn't an actual error. This means that it's not connected to the internet, which is fine, because it, because it's not. Basically, when this one is connected to the internet, it just shows a green light here, so that red light isn't flashing. So you would think it was fine, but however, it's still not working. It doesn't take the paper, it doesn't feed the paper through, and it also wasn't opening the till. I'll show you the paper not working. Paper goes in that way. And what it's supposed to do is it'll feed through a bit and then it'll cut it off and then you can remove that excess there and then it's ready to use, but it's not doing that. So I think I'm going to start with this one because I think this one might be quite a simple one. I think it might just need a bit of a clean. I think the, it could just be clogged up inside with beer and all that other good stuff. And then hopefully I can use that one to fix the old one from five years ago. Worst case scenario, I want to get one working one out of these two, at the very least. If I can get two working ones, then yay, let's get cracking. And with these being thermal printers, I'm hoping they're not as horrifically bad to take apart as the, the one that I did in this video here, the horrific printer one here. Mmm, nice. Let's try and work this out. Printers this time, I swore I wouldn't do it again. Yet here I am, opening them up. Let's fix them then. With the help of Emil Timman and Dr. Funkenstein. To the nit who I get infant mind know how to rhyme. John Prusher came on base, all things considered. Western and Western Nate, Dr. Princess Wizard. Wine Jockey Jam Rag and Flux for the Trinity. Daft Willy, RVE, Ben Rush, Infinity. Such stupid name here, bring back Ivor Biggin. Jonathan Wiggs, Ellis Garber, Jonathan Harden, Markovitz 19, Baroque, Fred Chauvier for fun, Adam Taylor, make out of Flux, Oz Newton, almost at the end we've got Andrea Fascio, playing all the right notes in the wrong order on my Casio, let's get back to the stars, let's go, enjoy the show, I know I'm a pro with flow, Monkey Joe Tokyo, call up police, Canadian D. Hello Clarice. Peace. Alright, well that was fun. There's quite a lot of... There's certainly corrosion here. You can see it on those pins there. Looks like there's some corrosion on this board here. Right, well let's get these under the microscope and have a, have a good look at them. Let's start with this little tiny board here. Okay, so there we go. You can see some signs there. I mean, it's not that bad, but definitely not perfect. Let's have a look inside the connector. 
yeah, so there's inside the connector. You can see that's pretty bad there. That needs to be that needs to be cleaned off. You can see little bits of green in other in other places as well. Yeah, so let's just give that a good clean. And to clean it, I'm going to be using some isopropyl alcohol. It looks like the corrosion has eaten through part of that pin. Yes, it has. Wow. Okay, let's have a look at the the main motherboard. The main board. The motherboard. The mother of all boards. This board. And oh, hoo hoo hoo. That doesn't look very clever, does it? Oh dear. No, that looks awful. I'm hoping there was never any components there where it says C513 and C515. Well, let's clean this up and let's uh, let's have a look, see what it looks like. I think I might have caught that in time. It doesn't look like it's uh, gone through any of the traces and everything still looks okay. Let's have a look a bit further up. Yeah, ooh, okay, we got some there. Now, I do think I got to this just in time. I think if that corrosion had sat on there for much longer, Certainly this board, I think it would have started to fry some of these components. And around here, where the connector is. I think all I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to put... I'm going to give everything else a good clean. So you can see we've got bits of beer, sort of stains everywhere. Give it all a good clean, I'm going to pop it back together. And then hopefully this one should be working. Come on. Yes! Awesome. Alright, so that one works. Let's see if we can get the other one working. Now I know how to take them apart. It shouldn't take me as long. I won't bore you with the disassembly of this. It's the same as the last one. So, I'll just do a jump cut or something. Oh. Oh, this one's particularly crunchy though. Oh. Ugh. Uh. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it's stuck down with like five year old beer. Okay, well, let's take this apart. Jump cut. Okay, this one doesn't look as bad, but I can see some spots here. Well, let's get this under the. Oh, and maybe here as well. Let's get this under the microscope and have a look at those areas. I'm not sure that's the problem. I think it might be something in here because this is the cutting mechanism. And obviously it said it had a cutter error, so I might need to open that up, but I can definitely see corrosion, so let's start here. Okay, where is it? Yes, we've got some there. That doesn't look very clever, does it, on that diode? Xena diode, I guess? ZDO1. And then I saw some... Oh, we got some corrosion there. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if they're just test points. But it's possible... So we've got some corrosion right through a trace, maybe. Don't know, I'll have a look at that. And then, where else did I see it? Over here. Ugh, a couple of resistors there, looking a bit worse for wear. Hmm. Legs of that SOT23, I think it is. ICO3. Don't look great. I think the rest of it is okay. No, it's not. You can see some more over here. Oh, okay. Right, I think we need to give everywhere a good clean. Let's start here. Nice propyl alcohol again. Oh, look at that. Looks better already. Okay, that might be alright. Where was the other bit? Ah, 
There. Not sure I saw that one before. It's kind of hidden by this big capacitor. And we've got a zero ohm resistor and a. Oh, what's that? Third. 103, it's one zero and then three zeros, so that's 10,000, so that's 10, 10k. That's how it works, isn't it? Awesome. Uh, but I think it might be okay. I think the corrosion's cleaned up. Let's have a look over here. Mmm, yummy. Yeah, they all look a bit corroded, but I'm not sure how important they are. They don't connect to anything on the other side. Ugh. Well, I mean, luckily, I don't think anything's actually damaged here. I think it is just corrosion that's been sat on the board. Let's have a look at this diode, though. Again, I think that might be okay. Multimeter in diode mode. We've got a reading of 2.9 that way. And nothing that way. So I think that's okay. 2.9 seems high, but I don't know. Seeing the diodes are not the same as normal diodes, are they? I can always measure that on the working one if, if this still doesn't work. I'm just going to finish giving this a good clean, and then I'm going to have a look at that cutting mechanism, see if there's anything going on inside there. In fact, thinking about it, the cutting mechanism connects here on the board, and that's where this corrosion is. So I wonder if something has gone down here. Well, I'll open this up and we'll have a look at that. If not, I'll go back to that area. Let's do that now. I suppose what I could do is swap out this cutting mechanism for the working one as well. And then we can, we'll know for definite. But let's open it up first and see. Right. Well, we've got a motor in there. Well, that looks fine, assuming the motor is actually turning. It's all nicely greased up. Yeah, I'm not sure the problem is there unless the motor's gone. But I can't see any corrosion. That, I presume, needs to sit on there. Maybe it wasn't sat on there properly. If I turn this gear... Yeah, you can see it's coming out. And then if I go back the other way, it should retract. And it does. Right, so I'm not I'm not convinced there's a problem with that. Let's have another look at this under the microscope around where the cutting mechanism connects. And that is this area right here, which is where we had some corrosion. I mean, what's this here? Uh... Is that some kind of voltage regulator or something? TA8428K? Okay, that could be the problem. It's a motor driver chip. And if that isn't driving the motor, then the cutter isn't going to work, is it? I think I'm going to try and desolder it and see if we've got some corrosion underneath. How do I do that? So it's here on the other side. No signs of any corrosion on the other side. I wish I had my moving solder sucker. I'm going to have to go and get it. I suppose rather than... Before we take that chip off, let's just... Have a look here. So we've got a zero ohm resistor and there was some corrosion here as well. Let's just check that, that resistor. Dave, I need to borrow you again. So, zero ohms. We should have continuity through this. Which we don't. Okay. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Just check it on Ohm's reading, see if we're getting any reading at all. We're getting 8 mega ohms. That's not right for a zero ohm resistor, is it? Well, let's take it off and let's measure it. Measure it. Go on ohms. 
and we're getting OL. Interesting. That is no longer a zero ohm resistor. got some damage there, the solder sort of flowed into the, the rest of the trace there, hasn't it? Um, but obviously they're supposed to be connected anyway, those two. Yeah, I mean I could change the zero ohm resistor for another one, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the problem, that might have just blown open because of something else. I think it's worth a try. Yeah, let's give it a go. And if the same thing happens to it, then I know it's not that, and it's more than likely going to be this Toshiba chip here, isn't it? See if I find a zero ohm resistor. Right, the only ones I've got are these tiny zero six oh threes, but I'm gonna have to go with that because I don't have anything bigger. There we go. I mean, I might, yeah, that might work. I mean, it doesn't look great with the corrosion, but I think that's on. Let's measure it in situ. There we go, zero. Nice. Okay, shall we give it a go? I think we should. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna have to put this fully back together. I probably am, which is a pain. Oh, can I just connect that up? Because this one wasn't making a noise when I turned it on, you know, like the other one did, you could hear the noise of the motor. This one wasn't doing that. If I plug this in here and power it on, will that? Let's. Let, I'm going to try it. This might not work. It might all have to be back together. <laughs> you saw that and heard that, right? It definitely wasn't doing that before. I'm going to put this back together. I have high hopes of this working now. All right, there we go. All back together. The moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Oh, it made a noise. And we're not getting the rapid blinking. That's just the network. Right, here we go. Let's pop some paper in. You absolute beauty. Well, let's just make sure that the other one still works. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, it's good not put the paper in properly. Hold on, Steve. There we go. Always put the paper in correctly. So fantastic, I now have two working ones. Fantastic. Why am I saying fantastic? So that, that is absolutely amazeballs. I now have two working ones. This original one from six years ago, I would never have been able to repair this that long ago. I wouldn't have had a clue where to even start. So I've made some progress. So I can now go and put one of these back at work. Keep the other one for spare. Excellent. Uh, I mean... Stupid princes. Call up police. Canadian geese. Hello, Clarice.